So the National Kidney Foundation has some initiatives right now. Um, awareness, of course, we want people to be aware of what's going on with kidney disease and how prevalent it is across the country. Um, prevention is big for us because if we can catch these folks earlier and not have to have them get on dialysis, um, catch it sooner, prevention is key. And what we look for for that are people with high blood pressure or diabetes. They're at the biggest risk for kidney disease. So if we can catch those folks early on. And then of course the treatment piece of it. So um, dialysis is a form of treatment for kidney disease and so is transplant. It's also a form of treatment because there is no cure for kidney disease. Those, those are our main three initiatives. We also work in the community on fundraising so that we can raise vital awareness and funds for our patients to be able to serve them and their needs. Well, it was interesting. Um, I actually ran across Charlotte's story on Facebook. A friend of mine personally just shared this story about Charlotte's birth, and it interested me. I used to work for the March of Dimes previously, so and I saw all about the baby's birth, and I said this, you know, I saw the word kidney kind of come up in the tagline there. I clicked on it and read the story. And when I read that Charlotte was born with no kidneys and she's been on dialysis since she was a little over a week old, it just really struck me. I needed to get to know Megan and find out more about this story and how we can tell it and how we can talk to her and figure out how we can help and how we can be involved and what she can do with us. Well, right now, um, about 120,000 people are on the list waiting for a life-saving organ. Most of those, close to 100,000 of those people are waiting for a kidney. Um, the flip side to that is there's a shortage right now of living donors. So uh, to get the word out, because statistics show us that if a person has an organ, a kidney transplant from a living donor, typically it lasts longer than from a deceased donor. So we definitely want to get those organs and make people aware that this is an option. You know, a lot of people don't even know that you can live with one kidney and don't need both. Um, so I think education is a big piece of it and the more we can educate the general public on kidney disease and, and so that they can understand the, what the process is, because it's a scary thing. Talking about donating a kidney, it's, it's very scary, there's a lot of tests involved, but if we can educate people and, and kind of ease their minds in that regard, then that's what we're looking to do. Well, I think Charlotte's story is completely unique. It's not every day that we even hear about children on dialysis, although it happens and it's true. Typically, the person that's on dialysis is older and has had a history of, of either hereditary kidney disease or got kidney disease because of diabetes or high blood pressure. So I think Charlotte's story is so unique and people can understand that kidney disease doesn't discriminate, that it can affect everyone, and that this is a problem across our country and we need to face it head on because there isn't anything that Megan and her husband or even Charlotte did wrong to make this happen. It's just something that happened. Um, so if the National Kidney Foundation can be there and educate people and make people aware by using her story, then we can just reach the most people.